the recording. So you all will receive a copy of this recording afterwards. And we greatly appreciate your time on what should be around your lunch hour today. Um, and thank you for being here. I'm Helly Crawford. I'm a certified career coach and the founder of HallieCrawford.com. And we are going to be talking today about solving career burnout. And I want you all to know, too, that um, just kind of admin really quickly that everyone is going to be on mute today, but we will have a couple minutes at the end for Q&A. Feel free to um, enter your questions or comments in the chat box at any time during the, co the course of this webinar today and also at the end of the webinar, too. So solving career burnout. So first of all, I want you all to know that for me, I actually understand how this feels. Even though I've been coaching and training for over 18 years, I have degrees from Vanderbilt University and the University of Illinois master's degree as well, and I absolutely love what I do and have loved it since day one, there are some times when I feel burned out too. It happens to the best of us, including me, and even though I feel like I'm meant to be doing what I'm doing, you know, I have a sense of passion and purpose almost every day in what I do as a coach, I sometimes too can feel overworked or every once in a while like it's too routine and I need to mix it up. Sometimes I can get bored as well or overwhelmed and as a result start to feel burned out in what I'm doing. And what I've done over the course of the past, you know, many, many years doing this is I've tried to mix it up and have been able to do so, luckily, by mixing it up with groups like this, um, doing group coaching in addition to individual coaching or webinars or presentations. So I just want you to know, first of all, out of the box, that you're not alone, that this is a very common phenomenon for people. Even when they've been in a career for a very long time, you can mix things up and make yourself feel better or feel better and less burned out. So here's the deal. As we go to the next slide here, I want you all to think about right now, get out your pen and paper, okay? And think about how you feel. Is it that you're burned out? Is it more so that you feel kind of bored or less than challenged at your job or in your career path anymore? Or is it simply that you're overworked or something completely different? Think about what it feels like for you and what's going on for you, because awareness is the first step to helping fix whatever challenge that we need to overcome or work on. So even if you're great at something and love it, you too can get tired of it. It can become too rote or routine. And sometimes when you're great at something, Sometimes you get rewarded, right, with more work. Or your boss might be intimidated by the fact that you're so great at what you do and they may not like it. There can be lots of different things that can happen for people. I have found so often with our clients that they'll come to us and say, Hallie, I'm great at spreadsheets or whatever it is, but I am so sick of doing them. So sometimes too, even when we're good at something, it doesn't mean that that is something that we should continue doing. And we are gonna talk today about how to handle all of these different issues in whatever way, shape or form, you feel kind of quote unquote burned out, we're going to deal with those, okay? We will brainstorm different ways or I will share with you the ways that we have made it challenging again um, for me, for myself, that some of the tools that I have used actually, but also the tools that we use with our clients, okay? So pay attention to these on the slide right now because they can give you some ideas as we get started here. So one of the things that I have done for myself to kind of solve this career burnout is I will create greater challenges for myself on a regular basis. So I need to kind of refresh my skills consistently in order to feel less burned out. That helps me personally. So I have made a commitment to attend at least one to two conferences every year. Sometimes I will work on performing my job in a different way. Like I said, trying group coaching, writing articles, you know, doing media appearances, different ways that I can educate people about their career. And in a lot of ways for me, it's important to grow or change my role on a regular basis. And these again are things that you can think about too. So changing my role from just coaching, now I have coaches on my team as well as residents writers. So diving into some of the, you know, more of the running of the business. 
um, and being more of an entrepreneur and more of the owner of the business and a little bit less coaching, that has enabled me to kind of solve this career burnout or work against it, okay? So here's what we're gonna talk about today. Our agenda is basically we're gonna discuss the different situations that occur for people in terms of career burnout. We're gonna talk about the impact that it can have on us. I will give you 10 tips to manage it more effectively. And by the way, I want you all to make this real. And I really want you to have action steps um, that you take away from this. And I want you all to know as well that we offer a free 20 minute career strategy session for anyone that feels like, you know, they want additional assistance with this or anything else. Um, in terms of their career path. I'd be happy to help you, you know, with anything related to this. It's a free strategy session. Happy to do it at any time. All right. Um, one of the things that I wanted to mention too that can help you from today is if you would like a copy of this PowerPoint presentation for today so that you have something in addition to the recording to print out and kind of take notes on later on, please feel free to just mention this webinar on the subject line of the email and you can get a copy of the PowerPoint. We will send that to you as a PDF. So why does so, career burnout, I should say, why does this happen, okay? It happens for a lot of different reasons, and I want you all also to take out your pen and paper again and think about why has this occurred for you? Because if you can identify kind of the source of the issue, we can start to make changes, right? So is it that you've be, been in a specific job or a role or at a specific organization for an extended period of time, and it's just been a long time and you're kind of feeling bored or less than challenged? Is it something that, you know, you're always called upon to do something that you are great at, like I mentioned before about the Excel spreadsheets, but you no longer enjoy it? Is it that you've had some life or career changes and what's rewarding for you has changed over time and you need to adjust or shift, you know, what your career path is or how you do your job according to these new values? And in some cases, like we said before, your workload can increase as your competence increases. And sometimes that can just be flat out overwhelming for people. Here are the results. The results are, um, and the impact, if you will, there's two areas, okay? You can become bored, lethargic, or disinterested, and obviously you're less effective as a result. And you can just get flat out overwhelmed and feel like you can't perform effectively at all. Now, the first thing that I want you to do, like I said a moment ago, is write down what the assessment is. So kind of an informal um, poll here for yourself. What is the result um, or what is the, the, um, the impact or source of your burnout, I should say? What's the main source of it? And it's okay, by the way, everybody, if you have more than one, that's fine. Write down one of these on your piece of paper or if it's something completely different, go ahead and write that down too. Okay, so take a moment to think about that for a second. And then I'm gonna to start to show you the 10 tips that we are gonna to discuss today that I will share with you to help you solve this sense of burnout, okay? So these are the 10 and let's dive into the first one. So first of all, like we've been talking about a little bit already, is to assess what's going on, okay? And not just assess you know, why you feel this way, the source of it, like we said, but take a step back for a moment and think also in terms of assessment about what do you want in your job? Is it that you wanna feel more passionate again about it like you did at the beginning when you first started? What is it that you want to have or change in terms of your career path or your job right now that's just not working for you as well, okay? And this is helpful to think about what has changed for you in the course of your career over time since the beginning. So what was it like at the beginning and how is it different now? And have those differences and those changes had a negative impact on how you feel about it? Part of this assessment, if you take a look at this next slide here, is to understand and review what our ideal career model tells you is important in terms of the right career path for you. So if you take a look at this for a moment, everyone, fulfillment on the bottom right-hand side here is the most important piece we find for our clients of people's career. They want to get a sense of meaning out of it in some way, shape, or form. And you need to also have a sense of enjoyment in terms of the tasks you perform every day. You want to be leveraging your strengths and those strengths that you want to leverage and use on a regular basis. 
you want to be leveraging in some way, shape, or form your past experience and or your educational background. You need to be clear about um, your qualifications, actually. So looking at education and strengths and experience again, you know, are you beefing up those enough or, you know, adding to your repertoire enough in order to feel challenged and kind of refreshed, like I said for me earlier. You want to make sure that the work environment over here is a fit for your personality type and that the role that you're in and the people that you work with um, and the culture of the organization is a fit for your personality type as well. So you have to think about work environment in conjunction, by the way, very much so with your personality type. And as part of your burnout, for any reason, the compensation that you're receiving, do you feel like, gosh, I'm just kind of burned out because I feel like I'm not getting rewarded enough, either financially or benefits-wise, whatever it is, um, for my job? So this ideal career model can help you assess what is not working in your career, okay? and what you need to change in order to make it better to solve this burnout issue. The second thing that we want you to do is from that assessment that you've just done, is make a list of the top five things that need to be different in terms of your career to make you feel better, okay, based on the model. It could be any of these examples here on the slide. It could be something else. So I encourage you to consider the items on this slide, everybody, is it that you need to reduce the use of one skill or increase the use of another skill that you just feel like, gosh, I'm not using my strengths enough or the ones that I want to be using on a regular basis? It could be a reduction in that, you know, the use of that skill or something else, okay? Another thing to think about from this slide too is, gosh, does the work environment need to be different? Can you adjust it in any way, like move towards working towards another team or something like that? The other thing that you can do on the bottom here um, of the slide is to track your hours, like spend a couple of days um, in terms of your work week and track where you're spending your time because this can actually help you identify the things that need to change. When you start to have a greater sense of where you're spending your time and is it working for you or not, that can help enormously, okay? And if you feel like, as I mentioned earlier, if you feel like you need more help with this because you're having trouble assessing what's working and what's not, happy to do a free 20-minute career strategy session with you. I do these myself, so they're one-on-one -on -one with me, um, by the way, just so you know individually. And if you email me at admin at halliecrawford.com, I'll send you a link to get that set up. So in terms of the assessment, um, still on number two, and then we'll talk about number three here in a minute, think about those top five things that you just wrote down that need to change. Can you get those things at your current job, or do you need to switch roles or organizations or even industries? I always recommend to people, gosh, if possible, try to achieve it at your current position first. See if it's possible there because obviously that's easier and there's something to be said for, you know, knowing and having the right expectations about, you know, what's coming your way in terms of your career. If you cannot get it there, though, don't hesitate to move into a different organization, a different industry, different role. Don't hesitate to do that and let fear hold you back, but at least consider, gosh, can I get this done or accomplished in my current role or even within my current organization? We have had clients determine that simply a different role in their organization is the right way for them to go. And a lot of times they're able to make that shift. It depends on the company or organization, of course. Some are more open to that than others. But the smart thing for them to do is just to be able to move you over because it's a lot easier to do that than hire someone brand new, as you can imagine. So tip number three is to stay in the know. And this is part of what I referenced earlier for myself, is make sure that you're taking on new challenges for yourself career-wise on a regular basis. And by the way, sometimes we might feel less burned out in our career if we're doing something in our personal life that helps us feel more challenged. Sometimes that can kind of enhance our, our work life as well. Is there a new skill that you want to acquire or need to, or new software you need to learn? And the cool part about this one, if you look at the slide, is that this also makes you more marketable if it's time for you to leave or, hey, for that next promotion. So it's always important to stay in the know and consider and kind of keep on your radar those new challenges that you may need to take on. One of the ways to kind of stay on top of these, by the way, everyone, is this is why networking and attending association meetings 
for your industry is so useful and helpful because you'll hear from other people or speakers, you know, fellow attendees or even speakers there about what's going on and what's hot in the industry. And it can give you a sense of what's next and what you need to stay on top of. Number four is to put yourself out there more. So to help solve this career burnout is to put yourself out there more, be more social, be seen at events inside and outside of your organization. You'll be invited to do more things or participate in projects and learn more about them. And you'll be more likely to learn new things. So for those introverts out there, and I can say this because I am more introverted than extroverted, putting yourself out there more may not feel like the most fun thing, but it's really important to do it, even if you do it just kind of one-on-one. -on -one. And especially everyone, if your job is a more solitary job, even if you don't want a more, let's say, extroverted role, Putting yourself out there will get you more involved in a new project, maybe that someone has been thinking about, but they haven't announced yet, or the chance to kind of match yourself up with a new team possibly too. So doing this more frequently, kind of pushing yourself outside your comfort zone can be a very positive thing to help with burnout. By the way, everyone, I'll pull up this next slide here, but I just wanted to remind you all as well that there is a handout that will help you with taking notes from today. We will send it out again after the webinar so that you have that as a resource too. But feel free to download that, that's in the chat box. If anyone is having technical issues with that, don't hesitate to send me a quick email. I'd be happy to send that to you afterwards as well. So number five is to mix it up a little bit, or this will help you mix it up a little bit if you're getting bored. Raise your hand for a project that you wouldn't have otherwise volunteered for. Start something new that your organization or company needs. Volunteer your time outside of work. Remember that how you feel personally can impact how you feel professionally at work. You know, so work on both in some cases if this will help you. We had a client in Atlanta who volunteered for a project online. She made great connections doing that. She got some new experience that she could use for her role. And she even got a reference from the group leader um, and the client that she worked on this project. So remote or online volunteering is possible. You can do this personally or professionally, like we said. And if you take a look at this slide here, you'll see some places and um, resources or websites that can point you to volunteering opportunities um, that you can perform either in person or remotely. This remote volunteering thing is a really cool concept. So that's number five. Let's talk about number six. So number six is to raise your hand like this guy on the far right here. So participate actively with your team. These are some small things you can do to help you get in the game again, even if it's for a short time while you assess what you need to do long term. Okay. So if you participate more actively in meetings, speak up, ask questions, make comments, present or provide ideas or suggestions for change. Don't be as hesitant, maybe, even if you're feeling kind of, uh, you know, bored and not as enthusiastic. Push yourself to participate more actively. You'll be seen and you'll be, therefore, called upon to help with things that you may not have been called upon to do otherwise. It helps you stay driven and motivated to perform as well because you're mixing it up a little bit. So that's number six. Okay, participate actively. Number seven is to communicate with your boss regularly, not just in performance reviews, but they will keep you in mind more often if you communicate with them and ask them questions like, you know, what are there projects that I can volunteer for? Or I would like to leverage or use or learn a new skill set. Are there ways that I can do that? So talk with your boss or human resources, okay, on a more regular basis. Um, one of our clients at Georgia Pacific says that their HR department, and I don't know if this goes across the organization with all employees, but they do discuss, you know, talking with people or discuss with people their career progression and what do they want next for their career. Some departments and some organizations are better than others. I get it. So if yours is one of those that's not so great at this, you need to be proactive about it and take it upon yourself. Here would be your agenda on this slide here for some of those conversations. You could talk to them about, you know, what you need to do in order to stay fulfilled and effective and ask if you can take on, you know, certain tasks or certain projects and maybe shift your role a bit if it's possible to do that and you think that's a reasonable thing and your boss would be open-minded to it. 
you can talk to them if you feel like you know you're you're swamped on this particular project and you need a little bit of help is there anyone else that can pitch in or you know I feel like my skill set might be better used or leveraged in this other way um, and if for some reason by the way um, your boss is not the type of person that will be as open to you about discussing this and maybe they get intimidated by these questions or whatever it is for that reason you need you might need to think about is this the right work environment for me to be in okay so pick and choose whether you know who the right person is to discuss this with maybe it's something you need to talk to your mentor about first and get some advice or a career coach like me about it first before you communicate with your boss we don't want to jeopardize your position of course but for those of you who have a really good boss and someone who's open-minded you know please consider this and even if you don't feel like that's the case if there are things that you can discuss to say hey are there some additional tasks i can take on that's usually a reasonable request okay so number eight is to take a class um, this is a great way to enhance your skill set but also get kind of refreshed. I honestly, it was a couple of years ago, I took a time management class. It had nothing to do with coaching, but it did end up helping me with my coaching clients when they had time management issues. But the point was for me, just getting out of the office for a couple of days and learning some new skills to be effective was so energizing for me when I got back to work. So even if it's not something that's related to your career path per se, Sometimes taking a class for time management or something else professionally can be so rewarding and helpful. You can take a class online or in person. These are some examples of some places you can find some really good online courses. And if you have ever taken an online course, please feel free to share any other resources or if the online course was helpful for you in the chat box because we always want to hear about new ideas. One of the newer, it's probably a couple of years old, I can't say exactly, but one of the newer resources that we have heard about from our clients is the General Assembly. They have classes here in Atlanta. I know they have them in New York and LA. Um, so General Assembly is one place in addition to community college, you know, you can check out resources locally for you, but there's usually more than we realize. We just have to look out there and find them. Tip number nine is to embrace change. So here's the thing, to give you a new challenge, but also add to your experience and skill set, you know, sometimes you need to be a little bit more open to either changes that are happening at your organization out of your control, or changes that you need to make in order to feel better about your job. So here's the thing, um, you can also think about the embracing change too, in terms of suggesting updates to your processes or operations at work, improvements on your sales process or the way that your team works together. Identify an issue at work within your organization or within your team or with your product or service, whatever it is, and consider you know, that challenge or that inefficiency and what is something that you can do about it. Speak up about it. Start to research some new ideas and ways that that can be managed or handled or improved. And this will help give you a new challenge and an opportunity to kind of to get more enthusiastic about your job and get involved in something that's not just the day to day routine. And number 10 is to write up your action plan based on everything that we've talked about the assessment all the way to the end. You need to think about, OK, if I'm not sure, for example, these are some examples on the slide. OK. Um, <clears throat> If I'm not sure that staying at my current organization is the right thing, how long am I willing to give it before I jump ship? Is it I'm going to stay for six more months, for example, and see if I can make these changes? Others might say, gosh, I can make these changes at my current role. So I'm going to check in with myself quarterly, put it on my calendar to just see how it's going and see if there's any other adjustments I need to make. We always recommend to our clients that they set three, six, and 12-month goals regularly check in with them and update them on a regular basis too and add them to their calendar so they're doing this on a regular basis and consistently and get an accountability partner partner um, ask a friend sometimes i talk so quickly um, ask a friend to hold you accountable hire a coach ask your mentor to help hold you accountable to making these changes and keeping track of your progress on 
overcoming your burnout, okay? One of the polls or questions I wanted to ask you all, and we highly recommend to all of our clients, is that we want everyone to have a strategic career plan. So please feel free as you're starting to um, think about and consider the questions you wanna ask in the chat box before we go today, please feel free if you do have a strategic career plan that is completed or that's in the works. We think that is incredibly important for our clients and we wanna make sure that everyone has one. We actually have a tool that will help you create your strategic career plan, there's a template that comes with it. It's very good in Excel. It shows you all of the different steps you need to take and pieces you need to consider. So if anyone would like a free copy of that webinar along with the template, three keys to unlock your strategic career plan, don't hesitate to email me at admin at hallycrawford.com. We would be happy to send that to you. So go ahead, everyone, and as we start to come to a close here, please feel free to put any questions you have in the chat box. I wanted to remind you just one more time, if you feel like you need some coaching, please don't hesitate to contact me. We do a free complimentary consultation for anyone that might be interested in coaching so you can learn more about it and find out if it's the right thing for your needs at this time. These are some of the organizations where our clients have landed positions and some of the testimonials from our existing clients. Our success rate with our clients is 98%. It's fantastic. We love what we do. And it's been 18 years doing it, so we're really proud of that success rate. All right, everyone. So get out either your handout or your pen and paper, please. And I want you to write down two action steps that you will take in the next week. Some of the examples that we shared are on the slide here. Review the career model. Talk to your boss, participate more actively in meetings, okay? So please write down two things. I invite you and encourage you to share them in the chat box because that helps with accountability. And before we go to Q&A here for just the last couple of minutes, I do need to be finished at 1.30. Um, I always like to share this quote. This is my favorite quote that helped me get through those times when oh, I felt like I had to take a risk and I didn't want to. Um, or there was a time when I needed to, you know, step out of my comfort zone and push myself. The greatest risk in life is not taking one. I want to remind you of this. We do not want people calling us, you know, years later saying, gosh, I thought about hiring you at the time and I haven't done anything about it. And now it's been three more years almost wasted because I'm not in the right fit or I'm still burned out. Don't let that be you. All right, so let's do the Q&A here. Like I said, I can do this for a couple of moments. Please feel free to share in the chat box any questions that you have. And if you don't have any, that's fine. We can sign off and we appreciate your participation, but I will give it just a minute here. All right, we do have one question. Thanks for asking this. Before I talk to my boss, should I let them know what I want to talk to them about or should I just kind of blindside them? That's a really great question. So the way that I would approach this is if you want to have, you know, it kind of depends on the relationship you have with your supervisor, of course. But if you want to have like a really serious kind of sit down conversation about burnout, which I would recommend you do, I would just let them know that you wanna check in with them a little bit on you know, some of the projects you've been working on and touch base on you know, the tasks you've been performing. I don't think you need to go in clearly and say, oh my gosh, I'm so, so burned out and unhappy. You don't need to tell them exactly you know, the whole thing and um, make everyone worked up about it, but let them know, you know, you want to talk about the tasks and the projects you're working on um, and how you can improve things for you and your team, for example, and then go in definitely with an agenda. What are the questions you want to ask? What are, what's the information you want to get from them? Find out, you know, what you need to do to get that next promotion, if that's part of what you're thinking about. Get those action items from them. So make sure you go in prepared and have a way to write things down to and a way to follow up on those. Great question. All right, anyone else? Okay, thank you all so much for your time and participation today. Like I said, I greatly appreciate it. And please know we are here to help. If you need anything or have any additional questions after this, 
don't hesitate to email me at hallie at halliecrawford.com. I'd be happy to answer any question you have and happy to share the tools that we referenced today at any time. Thanks again, everyone. Have a great rest of the day and a great rest of your week. Good luck with your burnout.